Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is The Wolf, and I'm casting a game between Ego, the red Protoss on the bottom right, and John, the blue Zerg, the top left of Jungle Base, and one of my favorite maps for sure. And I pre preloaded this replay and saw it is definitely the replay you don't want to click and then click away from. This is a good game. It's probably going to be my new, uh, like promoted video on my my channel so it's it's pretty cool I may wait until I cast all the other ones to upload this one make it the last final tasty happiness because currently I haven't so good, good morning guys good morning first thing I did today was uh, look around the forums lurk around the forums and then make fun of a troll and then I make some videos so yeah this game is pretty awesome as you guys can see it goes on for about 30 minutes it has every single thing you could ever th every protoss unit i think is in this game not everyone but you know more than usual hint 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 the zerg player like takes over the entire map and it's just the best it's, it's none of that boring like damn it is now and this is my favorite matchup you guys know why because protoss protoss is awesome and zerg need to die and that's my good reasoning there. So this one's going to be full of action and less of me talking about BS. Uh, probe checking out the base. Going to go for 15 hatch, I suppose, behind the expo. Not even scouting. This is one of those... Oh, he's putting a spawning pool at about 14, so... This is one of those ballsy Zerg players. Like, I don't need to hang out. You can be teasing me. I don't care. I'll just leave. <laughs> that is my troll voice, guys, and I hear that you really like it, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, when I set up the account... I will tell you guys what number I've decided on. But like I was saying in one of my last videos, if you donate a hundredth of my subscribers, which right now is like, and then round it to like a quarter or whatever, which right now would be like if you donate five cents, I don't even know. Uh, it would be half, it'd be 50 cents. If you donate 50 cents right now, then I'll say anything you want me to say in any voice that you've heard me use before. Which reminds me, I gotta do my Sean Carney voice because I've been practicing that one. And, uh,. Damn it. And I will say anything in any voice, and I'll answer any question you guys got. One question or, like, f sentence per 50 cents. So, And I think that's a nice way to give you something back, because I I thank all of you that will be donating. And if you don't, it's totally cool. I do this for you guys. So, And every, every, mo every bit of money that goes into that is designed to help this channel become better and help you guys get entertained more. So you, it's like uh, Assassin's Creed. The more money you put into it, the more you will see. So do you see? And there's a probe trying to get away. I don't think he's going to get away. He needs his shields to regenerate a little bit. Uh, let's take a look. We can see with tab, can't we? No, click. His shield, I think his shields aren't regenerating fast enough to give him enough resistance. Zerglings are so fast. This is the critical moment of the game. Run, Mr. Probe, with one HP. You must get away from the Zergling speed. Oh my god, there's something in the way. You gotta get through. Oh. Guys, I'm just gonna end this replay. I got some crying to do. We got a, uh, that's it, warp gate. <laughs> An important upgrade that I forgot what it's called. Warp gate, hiding the drone. Bitch, you're gonna die now. He's like, I gotta get away. And then we also have the expo going down. It was going down. It was probably like a 20 expo while I was talking about stuff in my Sean Con Connery voice. If you guys know on uh, like USA or whatever, they're playing Indiana Jones. So check that out. I'm going to tell you guys to watch it because it's awesome. We got four gates going down. I wouldn't be surprised to see four gate into an expand, which is actually pretty powerful. Usually it's three gate into expand. Um, we can see a spine. Look, look at that picture of a spine crawler. What's up? That's like the head of the tentacle. I always, it's like walking. Okay, listen to my walk noise. Yeah, laptops are cool. They can do that. They they're part compute. They're part keyboard. <laughs> Two spines going down. Uh, just assuming this is gonna be definitely a macro zerg. He's like, I can just macro up, which allows this guy to macro up. And as as always, if your opponent gets defensive and expands, then you can just expand and gain the advantage of that. He wasted you know 350 minerals on, or it's actually like 400 because they cost 50 drones too or whatever. Let's take a look. Yeah, so it is 150 each. So he's lost 300 minerals so far. That's like a free expo for you, so take advantage of that. If you see someone put down canned stuff, especially if they only put down a couple to stop early aggression, just expand. You guys feel a hand gesture? Just expand. It's like slap. You're stupid, stupid. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite things after a couple days reading the comments on a video is reading all the things I did in a video but don't remember doing. 
He was like, I love that voice. I'm like, which which voice? I love it when you quoted Family Guy. I'm like, what? Which one did I do that? <laughs> oh, speed's going down. Roach Warren too. I did notice it, but I. Uh, this is about the time where I start really casting the game. You guys know I spend like the first five, six minutes just making fun of players and stuff. And I just watched, I just saw Ego post something cool. And I remember that I got a replay from him. He's a high level diamond player. I got a text message. It's not a call this time. Um, he's a high level like 2300 diamond player. I like getting all these diamond replays. And then John is probably up there. He's. I really like these players' names. Instead of it being like Kadra Callan Card. Which is, it's pronounced card, not cardre. It's talent card. He's like, here's my really long name. And then there's child abuse. <laughs> it's just Ego and John. It's like the one time I'm gonna actually going to be able to write it all out myself instead of having to copy pasta it. Three roaches coming out for Mr. Zerg player. We also got a robotics coming out, which is pretty standard play. We got four gate robotics. I believe it's four gate robotics. Yes. Get rid of this. It really throws me off. So now I'm going to get into the game. Four gate robotics, we also have roaches coming out, so the robotics is a really good counter to the uh, roaches. Of course, voiders are also a pretty good counter here. I do believe that these th three roaches are mostly just for uh, securing dominance, but currently the Zergi is definitely behind. I mean, he's able to drone up freely, which is bad, but he's still equal bases with the Protoss player. And I say Protoss, not Protoss, it's just I say it so fast, it sounds like Protoss. Uh, the Protoss player, uh, you can see how he's just, he's saturating slower, but he's still... I mean, look what he's got going on here. His army is way more deadly right now. A push could probably kill him. Although, the Zerg player is doing a great job of scouting. I mean, he would really have to... Like... Yeah. Uh, by the time he gets around this way, the Zerg... Never mind. So, yeah. The Zerg player is scouting is amazing. And it's important... <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> there we go. The Zerg scouting is amazing. And this is a good example, guys. Covering the map with a line with your overlord zerglings on the Zelnaga watchtowers and then like one over here is great zerg play. He's able to drone up free. He knows what's exactly what's going on unless there's Dark Templar running across the map. Seriously? Why so serious? So uh, you guys can see how he's able to drone up so much more freely and then I go down in frames per second looking at the zerg base. That's why I hate zerg players. Because you make my frames per second go down. I mean this army's not that scary but he can just make an army as soon as he needs it so... It might come down to force field micro at the early game or the mid game. Get the sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Observer coming in. He's like, what's, go uh, what's going on, guys? It's going to just take a lot. You guys can't even see me. That was okay. And I guess I was lying. It could be an, uh, an observer or a dark templar. <gasps> Sp Spore? Spire. Great timing there. Ten minutes. I mean, eight, guys. Cover it up with your fingers. That's about eight. Eight minutes right there. Eight minutes mark. So he would he would have saw the lair going up around eight minutes. So, um eight minutes and then I'm pretty sure it's every two minutes you want to scout if you can if you can't you gotta do it every four minutes or so so you know ten twelve yeah, the more scouting better assuming you had like a thousand uh, observers not overseers if you had like a thousand observers just floating all over his base and then you somehow still could make a 200 army then you'd probably win every game you're like that's exactly what's going on guys I see it oh there we go Colossus coming out and Twilight Council. This is the power of two base Protoss. Protoss should never expand. Ever. It's not fair. <laughs> it's pretty lol. And then I like how they, these speed lords. Speed lords are pretty cool. They're like, what's going on guys? Okay, I'm out of here now. You can't catch me. <laughs> You're fast, but I'm faster. <laughs> no, I'm out of here. <laughs> You're a bitch. You ain't gonna get me. So he's gonna get blink probably first. Because like, damn it! There's only one problem I can really flaw flaw this Protoss player for, as you guys can see his minerals are already starting to build up, and to tell you the truth, they will build up throughout the game. You know why that is? Dun 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 dee! Too many stalkers! I know they cost more minerals than zealots, but zealots have a much lower cooldown time. I... It's, uh... Great. You can't just tell me. It's... I know that zealots are 38. I think stalkers are... I don't know what stalkers are. Come on, one of these... Come on, he, has to, he has to be macrofanging a little bit. He's also going for plus one weapons. He's pretty much doing whatever he wants to. Plus one weapons, Colossus, Thermal Lance, Blink. He's the whole shebang. Now the, the Zerg player, unharassed, will be able to expand. He's got, uh, this is probably mostly for, what are those called? Corruptors, not for Mutalisks, because he's going Hydralisks. So Roach Hydra is really deadly. Although, once again, he's playing fairly in the dark. His placement of his tech is great. I mean, knowing that he, most players will expand pretty safely on this map. Take a look. 
32 seconds versus 28, so that's four extra seconds. And if you chrono boost it, it's great. Uh, most players know that you're going to be able to expand pretty safely on this map, and so taking advantage of it, putting your tech in between your bases, is probably the best place you can put it. We also have photon cans going down to protect from mutilus harass, and uh, great creep spread. You guys are going to see this throughout the entire game. Zerg basic concepts for this guy are great. Great scouting, great creep spread. Those are two very important things you need to learn how to do as playing Zerg. Uh, and then you also need to know when to drone and when not to drone, which is usually a result of scouting, which can be done with creep tumors and zerglings. So blink is almost done. Way too stalker heavy. But then again, once you get blink stalkers, if you have a great micro protoss player, then it makes the entire difference. Uh, another Colossus coming out. Two Colossus. Now this is getting bad. I mean, he let the zerg player kind of just macro up, which is bad. But he was on even bases, and so now you can see how deadly this is. One more warp, and he'll, well, plus ones will be done by the time it gets there. Plus, he's getting a Templar Archive, so like I said, guys, you're going to see pretty much every unit you could ever want to see. And no, Void Rays don't make the list of units you want to see. <laughs> That's why you guys don't watch my replays. I'm like, Void Rays are cool? You're like, no. And so the Zerg player knows exactly what's going on. He knows the push is coming. He's expanded twice. He's like, whatever, I can take this. I can take this. And he's going to morph in a shit ton of... Oh, see... That's what I told you guys. Are like that's damn right, that's not gonna happen. And so he's got plus one uh, ranged weapons. Totally gonna help out against this guy, uh, the this army, not this guy. And he's also scouting. So and remember, guys, whenever you see creep that's not receding, the Zerg player can see you too. Kind of creepy, isn't it? And so this could actually come down to really good force fields, able to like poke away the army slowly. It's a great advantage. And if he doesn't put a force field up, he could be in a lot of trouble. He's still got a lot of Colossus, but once these guys get in position here and take out the Colossus, it should be okay for these to take out. And now there we go. The uh, little focus fire by the Stalkers would be great to help out their Colossus buddies, but, I mean, Corruptor's able to tank so much damage. They're so good at it. Falling back to his defensive perimeter, unfortunately, Colossus outrange it. Fortunately for him, he's also got Corruptor's. Corruptor's are like, bitch, I got a bonus damage to you. But then again, there's not that many. He needs to warp in a fresh six batch of them. He's definitely feeling a little bit tight on the gas right now. He could use some Zerglings, I guess. The Zerglings just slow down his opponent. You see, guys, the buildup of minerals here. A little bit of mac macro fail while pushing, but don't worry, guys. When you push, if you're going to win, then you can focus on your micro. And there we go. Taking care of that creep. Great Protoss play. Don't let him spread the creep. Get rid of that bitch. <laughs> and then, of course, his o he's got his overlords everywhere pooping creep. So I don't know why he didn't just push in. Or just sit there and keep attacking, but I guess he took out he took out the creep first, so that's good. I mean, who wants to play blind now? This is really big here. You got to make sure that you're, you know, the Zerg player has expanded to the back area. You know he's done that. There's no reason the Zerg should not expand back there unless he wanted to expand out here first. So that's not safe. It's very dangerous. And so you need to check for another expansion, especially around 15 minutes. Ego, you must make sure to check that out. So he definitely sent us good, good replay today. I love watching him blow up these creep tumors. Like I got 58 feet now. It's a destructible. And he's pu pushing back all the creeps. So that's kind of what he's focused on right now. People deny good scouting by the Zerg player, and with scouting, not all just power and stuff. <laughs> I didn't do my Sean Connery voice. My diaries in Berlin. Henry Jones Jr. I've been practicing it, but I just woke up, so it's not as good. That's his name. Henry Jones Jr. 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 There's Blink. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool, guys. You know who's cool? I'm cool. Ice Fang's cool. And there's, shoo, so many Hydralisks, but he's got to have Corruptors to support them. And now he's got two hidden, hidden, there's some air quotes for you guys, hidden expansions. And by hidden, I mean right in plain open. And the Protoss was like, mm, what's going on here, guys? This is one of those times where you want to have one Stalker over here. The Zelnaga Watchtowers and Gas, as in like the little gas, black gas geysers that are on like a uh, scrap station, those are added for a reason. They're very cool, and you should take advantage of them at all times. So he really needs to put down another creep tumor. You can see how his creep's starting to recede. Not good. He's also going to get some scouting in with the uh, Observer. There's only four Corruptors or so. I mean, there might be some floating around. I can look at the unit stab. That make more sense. Uh, four Corruptors, yes. So he's definitely feeling a little bit bad. Protoss player is probably going to expand soon. You see how he's built up a lot of minerals. Although, he, uh, looking at the base, he's done pretty much everything. He's got Storm. He's getting Kydera and Amulet. He's getting Charge. Great play. Uh, definitely probably built up a little... Yeah, he's building up a little Chrono Boost. So, it would be great for him to put down another couple... Probably two or three Warp Gates and just warp in a shit ton of Zealots. Seriously, that'd be great. Just <sighs> Now, uh, take your army. Now add 40 Zealots. Go! <laughs> and there we go. We got some... Uh, Snipage going on, they're like, shit, I probably should really run away right now. And then, he's dead. There's nothing to do about that. 
And so now engagement. Da, 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 That's co coder guys. Um, Zealots in the front. They do have. Ch they don't have charge. They will in a second. That's great. They need the charge to counteract the, the free. Get the damn charge done. Charges will be done. You'll watch them charge forward. They're taking so much damage though. You guys can see how effective they are. Zealots are cool. There's charge, and now they become effective combat units too. The storm going down on top of the Hydralis. How will Lizard player hold out? Probably because of the macro fill. The Protoss play, but that's okay because the micro is so awesome. And then the corruption seem to be using their corruption ability. I know it's a little bit micro intensive, but adding it on top is great. Storms are so strong you can't sit in them. There's a reason that Hydralis only have 80 HP, so they die in one storm if they don't move. So. There's uh, there's the blink. I mean, the Hydralis are so strong. You see the damage per second, how they're able to keep wiping off the units. Even the storms aren't enough to hold that bait, but still, the storms were just too much for the Zerg player, and now he needs to definitely undrone and get a giant army out. So taking a quick look at the Zerg player base, he's got uh, just five, four, but he's also morphing a shit ton of roaches and shit. You guys heard that little... <coughs> I don't know what that's up with that. He's morphing a really large army right now, so he should have enough to counteract his push. But the Protoss player wisely expanded while pushing. I love my hand gestures. They're so cool. And so uh, now he's got two tier, well, the two good tier three units. I'm not counting Mothership and Archons. He's got two out of the four effective carriers are included in that. So he doesn't have uh, Dark Templar or carriers yet. And so those are the two bigger ones. I mean, there are Archons. Yay. I can't believe anybody has ever said Archons are amazing. And then... uh He's also missing Mothership, so... And yeah, I... Put it in Mothership on top of this army, you know what? You just wasted 8 supply, great. Seriously, it's not worth it. Ever. Ever. And so, once again, you can see how all the Zealots died. He's built up 3,000 minerals. Seriously, warp in some more. You need more Zealots in this army. Unless you really abuse Blink Micro. And at this point in the game, this is not enough to deal with this army. There's too many Roaches. Roaches are too good against Stalkers. He'll need the Storms, but still, his there, his units are a little bit out of position. Hitting the Roaches is not the best choice. The Roaches are there to tank, not to deal. You got no one to hold them. got no one to storm them, bitch. And then he's going to run backwards. Um, so the Storms helping keep his army alive. It's still pretty scary. Zerg player's not really taking advantage of his creep. He's trying to just tank storms. You really can't do that. It's, storm may not be as effective as the EMP, but the big thing it does is force your opponent to micro. It gives the Protoss player kind of an advantage in that field. Surprised Guardian Shield didn't go down. A Guardian Shield there would have really made that quite easy in comparison, considering it takes away uh, two, twelve, one sixth of all Hydralis attacks. So Hydralis attack pretty fast. It's pretty big. Hydralis Den is going down. Great shot. Gonna have to choose between Hydralis Den and uh, Spire. With this army, though, you want to hit the uh, Hydralis Den because it's so weak to Hydralis compared to a Spire, which is going to make, well, like, you're less wee, you're Unfortunately, though, you, what you really need to be hitting is the Roach one, or, you know, the Hatchery would be a great choice, too. Got some Force Field going down there. Remember, don't forget the Garden Shield, guys. Sentries, the Force Field is great. Look how important it is here. I mean, this army might be able to hold off. He did snipe the uh, Spire, which is great. His Blinks, he's probably just going to fall back now. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Force Field before he goes. Oh, shit. So I think he's just going to blink away. Watch this. To the shadows I run. Blink. <laughs> that was definitely not delayed. And so the Protoss player has done a great job keeping the Zerg on his toes. Zerg player has done a great job staying up in the game. Creep, sp spreading his creep. Knowing when to drone and when not to drone. But losing those two tech buildings is really critical here. He's going to have to rebuild them. And now... Uh, I would be hesitant to say he needs to be getting to his tier 3 broodlords or... Uh, Ultralisks, so. Uh, got plus two weapons? Yeah. Because plus one was already done. Plus two weapons finishing. Uh, still hasn't done too much with his base in terms of changing. Like, we can see there's a lot of macro fail going on in total. I mean, warping in... He, at this point in the game, you need, like, ten more warp gates and a shit ton of zealots. Warp gates are awesome. If you get enough of them, it turns you into a zerg player. You can just warp in another army. My army's dead. Here's another. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Have fun. Uh, quite a bit of roaches. Definitely... Against Storm, you'll need to go more Roach heavy. And against Colossus, although Templar are kind of cool. There's just there's not much that really counters them. They're so good and they're cool, but you have to micro them. So a lot of people say I'm like a high Templar. Casa de Templare, my charge. We are the light of the Kala. Who or not not to? We shall stand against the darkness. <laughs> we are focused. We are unanimous. <laughs> we are the Borg. <laughs> 
We are the Borg. You're technological and biological. This seems to be added to our by the Borg. I mean, the Zerg Zerg are running up the ramp. Not bad positioning, but he's going to run up into the Protoss player. Needs needs the Guardian Shield. You're underestimating it, my friend, but your storms are impressive, and they're going to destroy the main damage dealing. Fortunately, you don't have enough roaches or uh, delts to support your stalkers here, so they're just going to tank the storm, though. And so I wouldn't be too surprised to see some burrow action going on. Because burrow and roaches, especially with cunning claws, are actually a pretty effective unit against Templar and their storms. But you can see here that without the zealots to tank some damage, the zealot the zealots to tank some damage, the stalkers are kind of weak. So then he takes my advice and makes a shit ton of zealots. For ire, my friends. De -de 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 <laughs> We're taking the Hobbit Storm Guide. Unfortunately, Sir Players, this is like the lucky probe. I can't believe I caught this because I watched it. Control Shift F. I'm the lucky probe. I just found the base. It's so happy to be lucky. I'm a happy probe. Gonna scout over here. And then I'm gonna get blown up by a shit ton of roaches. <laughs> oh my god, that probe made them run away for a second there. And so this is kind of dangerous. Of course, they are speed lords, so they're definitely not in too much danger. They just need to back up and they'll be fine. I think speed lords should get a bonus off of Crete, but he's gonna shoot out a couple of them with blinks, so. Definitely not a position you want to be. I mean, he's definitely he's not going to be supply blocked because he's done a great job staying on top of it. But he does have Burrow now. Uh, foresaw the future. Burrow and we're going to check out this engagement before I go back. He knows he can't deal with that. He doesn't have enough Zell. It's going to have to back up. Your Stalkers, they're pretty fast, but not when they're off the creep. I think, let's see, take a look at the Roach Speed. Roach Speed is 3. Wow. Versus Stalkers, which is 2.95. Stalkers can pretty much stay out of harm's way pretty well. Uh, plus three, plus two weapons still. Plus three is going to be starting pretty soon. Stalkers can stay out of harm's way pretty well unless they're on creep. In which case, wait, it's it's two to... Yeah, they can stay out of harm's way just fine unless it's on creep. So, I don't have to make sense to you guys. Screw you. <laughs> Hydralists are also really fast. They're pretty awesome. Those are what we call baller zealots. So, like, I'm just going to go commit suicide. <laughs> it's okay. Great pylon placement here. He's going to see exactly what's going on. He's like, damn, my rocks are going down. Better fall back. And so... Definitely in danger of losing some stuff. There we go. There's what I wanted you guys to see. Stargate and dual carriers. Carrier has arrived. We're going to see some awesome carrier shit going on. I'm going to talk like this for the rest of the cast. Carrier. Carrier. <laughs> My patient is luminous. Resist the interceptors. And so, his back expansion. Well, mostly mined out, so it's not too bad. Definitely not the base you want to be losing right now. Although, he's kind of focused firing the cannons, which are taking a lot of damage. Like, two shots from an entire army, like, bitch. And so he's falling back right now. He's getting four high Templar. Really important that he storms well to slow down the Zerg player. Because once the Zerg player sees Templar, he's like, shit. Time to kill those little fragile gas cannons. So now we've got the army coming in. Unfortunately, the Zealots have to run all the way down there before they can charge. They're like, I'm going to get you. But Blink, great use of Blink right there. Getting right on top of the army while they're trying to fall back. No creep spread. He definitely needs his overlords or a creep tumor over here to help increase his speed and ability to kite. Unfortunately... We're going to see some awesome burrow power. and um, He doesn't have an observer with his army. It must have been sniped earlier. But he does have two carriers. And once they come out, the Zerg player is in a lot of trouble. Unless he gets... You can see how, at this point in the game, Protoss, Protoss Tier 3 is becoming so strong. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons that our tech tree is so separated. Is that once we get, like, carriers out, they need... Hydralis to deal with it, and then once we get Colossus, we can deal with that, or High Templar. It's just, you can see how, once we get enough Tier 3 out and the gateway to support it, it doesn't matter what you have, because we'll just kill it all. Tier 3 units are all linked by one great similarity. They have extremely high damage per second, but low health to cost ratio. Except for the Mothership, which sucks, and the Archon, which isn't that good. <laughs> it, Archon's the only unit that does tank, so... Probably should have waited. Oh, actually, that's why he didn't wait for Tiling Claws, because the Observer's saw it. So now that the Observer's out, uh, getting plus one air weapons, which benefits carriers insanely. And now we've got two carriers. Isn't that just so awesome, guys? I got you guys this awesome replay. I'm going to go push against this. Problem of the counter push. I think Zerg players feel, feel a little bit right now. I'm surprised this base still has so much minerals for it. And we know that some slaughter is going to go on. We're going to see some uh, counter slaughter here. Trying to morph in some stalkers. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, this, this army is definitely... Man, those are cool. Look at their spines grow when they shoot. That's so cool. Spine. 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 And there's some macro fails because of the uh, 4,000 minerals and the chrono boost. But stay on top of your gas is great. That's a really big thing. And of course, all the expansions have been pretty well taken. 
I mean, it's not safe to take any expansion at this point. So we do have the carriers have arrived. They do... The armor of the roaches is three right now in total, I think. Let's take a look if I can. Three, yeah, I'm right. So uh, they're able to resist a lot of damage, but realistically, there's still so much damage per second coming from these interceptors. Six times two times eight. Yeah. And then, of course, it would actually be three times two times eight. That's how much damage these guys are doing to each roach. So... Uh, three times two times eight, just six times eight, so it's 42 damage, so I'm so good at math. You guys love it. You guys love me. I love you. We got some hatchery, hatchery go action going down. Zerg player is probably feeling it right now. I mean, look how many expansions he's got. He's definitely feeling it. He doesn't have enough minerals, and that's a bad spot to be in. I mean, uh, when you're micro macro failing like this, and your gas is limiting you, then it's a little less bad than macro fail when your minerals are limiting you, because then you need to expand and spend minerals to expand. And so it could really come down to great micro by the uh, Zerg player taking advantage of it. He, I don't think there was an observer nearby. I think it went up to the base or something. The Urska Desk. I know it's Urska Dak, but I like to call it Urska Desk. Urska Desk. Stop just copies me. I do go 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 And there's the observer. And so once again, like Dark Templar, if you're able to snipe the observer, which would require a lot of micro, especially because how small they are then you will be able to take advantage of Burrow. Although we have four carriers. Carriers have totally arrived. They still have plus one weapons. Not getting plus two yet. We do have plus three weapons. Not yet. Gas is really limiting. But you can see one really important aspect of carriers in the real late game. Look at his mineral count. Yeah, he was at 4,000. Interceptors are a great mineral sink. I mean, out of all Protoss units, if you need to get rid of your minerals, Zealots are great. And then interceptors are better. Of course, you don't want to be like, damn, I have a lot of better time to get carriers. Carriers arrived. And as soon as the observer comes over here, <laughs> that's definitely not where you want to be like, we're safe down here, guys. We're down here, okay. And then, of course, the roach is like, shit, better, like, get stuck in the corner. I feel sorry for these poor Zergies. They're like, we're going to be safe in the corner. Yay! No! <laughs> My anus is bleeding. Life is good. My anus is bleeding. <laughs> so all of the voices I can do, I can do Elmo pretty well. I do Schmeagle. I do Sean Connery, and I do Kermit the Frog. So I'm thinking about doing a talk show. What do you guys think? One man talk show. <laughs> What's your what is your opinion on the current political status of the United States? Well, I feel that it's very it's, it's my comic voice is not working right now. This is my weird voice. John just leaves the game. Nice job, Eagle. That was great play there. I mean, you definitely made mistakes, but that was awesome. Zerg player also made a lot of not mistakes. He, I mean, I was meaning to say he made a lot of goodness. <laughs> that would be most good subs. Most good. And the best thing about casting a game that can be longer than 15 minutes is I can cast it. I don't feel so bad about adding some seconds on the end. Like I had a video the other day that had two seconds added on. Anyway, guys, I hope you loved that cast. There's the carrier penis, in case you guys didn't know. Carrier penis. I hope you guys loved that cast because I know I loved casting it. And send me those replays. Click the subscribe button. It's so easy to subscribe. Just do it. You can trust me on this. That's a Doctor Who quote. If you guys don't know it, you can trust me on this. You can trust me on this. And I don't think I can howl because my nose is like really starting to clog up. But I'm going to try. Thank you for watching The Wolf. Arrgh!